I don't know why I brought this with me. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you so much, President Chop, for that introduction. Ralph Waldo Emerson said that um, the earth laughs in flowers. So I'm glad that this morning we took those blossoms of laughter, beheaded them. <laughs> are now wearing them proudly. <laughs> but they look beautiful, thank you very much. <laughs> to the arboretum staff. <laughs> um, so, many thanks also to Grounds and Horticulture, the LPAC staff, um, Media Services, the translators, and anyone else who is helping to make this menu come alive this morning. Out of sight is certainly not out of mind. To the parents Siblings, grandparents, godparents, and friends, welcome. Good morning and congratulations, not only for sharing in our celebrations today, but also for finding a parking space. <laughs> Talk about competitive admissions. <laughs> to the deans, the board of managers, staff, faculty, <coughs> and the seemingly autonomous miniature vans and golf carts that zip all over campus that I'm including so I can stay on the good side. <laughs> Thank you for getting us here and for not running us over. <laughs> to the class of 2014. What's up? <laughs> this is weird, right? <laughs> really weird. But it's a good weird. It's our favorite kind of weird. I feel deeply honored and humbled and privileged to be given the opportunity to say a few things to you today. I'm privileged, that's a buzzword. Um, I want to mention it briefly because it, it is important. Uh, and my words, while I hope they provide some respite from the ceremonial dialectics that will come, <laughs> will have limits in their reach. Um, so I'm a cisgendered, biracial, straight male. And I'm aware of the privileges that come with those identities. <laughs> and today, as we receive our diplomas, we're receiving another very important piece of privilege. Um, so my experience at Swarthmore was an incredible one, but it was just one tiny little band of light in the brilliant spectrum of experiences that my classmates had, which together form a rainbow. <laughs> Today, as we reflect on our illuminative experiences in this hallowed and beautiful amphitheater, and compare where we once were to where we are now, we effectively form a double rainbow. <laughs> That's a popular culture reference. <laughs> So in my search to find words befitting of such a talented, intelligent, interesting, and a beautiful class, I thought I'd take a new approach to stay true to the spirit of Swarthmore. Thus, I looked not through volumes or journals or Wikipedia. I looked instead in the recycling bin in my dorm. <laughs> now, there are very few occasions at which it might be acceptable to recite a quote that you found on the side of a box of Franzia. <laughs> but I think that this might be one of those occasions. <laughs> we are proud of what we are doing, and we plan to do more. <laughs> to Franzia, the first thought is like, no, <laughs> you can stop. <laughs> Apply to the class of 14, absolutely, never stop. Um, I'm incredibly proud to call myself a classmate of every single one of you, um, and I don't think that anything, even the prospect of unemployment, will stop us from doing our best, <laughs> staying up all night, and watching entire seasons of shows on Netflix the day that they're released. <laughs> We're proud of that. And we'll do it more. <laughs> For those of you who are thinking, wow, he opens with the Franzia quote, where is this going? <laughs> Don't worry. I learned in Professor Schwartz's class 
that last impressions are actually far more memorable than first impressions. So I'm sorry that I'm not sorry that I couldn't come up with a better beginning. <laughs> I can also promise you that this speech lacks essential themes, so don't go looking for one. <laughs> I'm just going to talk about a couple of things. Um, so like folders about to receive their newest files, we are all arranged alphabetically, wearing the same thing. I guess there's cardboard involved. How did we get here? Let's rewind a bit, all the way. I don't remember much of freshman year orientation, but I'd like to take this opportunity to regale you with just a small piece of it, as I was thinking about it recently. Lights up, the Lang Concert Hall. Liz Braun is telling us that she is our new dean. I'm okay with this. I've never really had a dean before. This one seems very eager. <laughs> she welcomes us to our new home, tells us that we are all special, and then enumerates. One of you, she says, has been a congressional page. One of you, she continues, helped to found a homeless shelter. This went on for a while. One of you, has staged a coup d'etat in your hometown. <laughs> One of you has been to a party. <laughs> but, she reassures us that none of us are admissions mistakes, which is cool. <laughs> it's great. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> um, but then she continues, let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life, that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there. Like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. The matrix is all around you. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. She went on. You think that's clean air you're breathing? <laughs> I went to Worth Health Center that night because my social consciousness hurt. <laughs> they said it was because I had never used it before. <laughs> so, matrix references aside, this class is seriously awesome. Um, I don't want to belabor the point, but I do, and I will. Um, freshman year was really intimidating for me because it seemed like everyone I knew had some kind of like special power. Uh, they either were like really good at math, or like a sports champion, or like took so many AP tests that they didn't have to take classes, or you know, <laughs> really artistic, or they tap danced. Um, and then there was this really tangible feeling of inadequacy that would sometimes visit me after I watched like an a cappella performance or sat through a really intense lecture that just went completely over my head. <laughs> or after I had a conversation with someone who knew exactly who they were and could use that sense of identity to form opinions that I couldn't touch with counterfactuals. But then, surely enough, people, professors, staff members, and ultimately friends showed me that I could have powers too if I worked hard at them and never doubted myself. Identities, as it turned out, didn't have to be crystallized or validated or even fully decided to be real. Minds didn't have to be made up at the beginning, middle, or end of any conversation. Where is he going next? <laughs> Graduating from an elite institution such as ours is very unlike escaping from a maximum security prison. <laughs> that would be a terrible, horrible comparison to make. I would never really seriously make such a comparison. But hypothetically, <laughs> If I were to make such a comparison between Swarthmore and, say, Alcatraz, here are a couple of hypothetical parallels I would draw. First, it's actually really hard to get in. You have to be the best at what you like doing. 
And even then, you might be admitted somewhere else. <laughs> to get out, you're going to have to work really hard. It's not something you can do in a day. It takes years of scraping through walls that they tell you are just too thick to get through. <laughs> but every day, you scrape knowing that walls are just constructs <laughs> and that the status quo can be upset. <laughs> Secondly, you can't do it alone. It has to be a collaborative venture, not a competitive one. You'll need one person to distract the authorities, <laughs> another to engineer something cool, and then someone to continually cast doubt upon the entire operation. <laughs> I don't know, guys. Don't they turn the motion sensors on in the cave after it closes? <laughs> I don't know. They might. <laughs> Thirdly, in regards to the food. <laughs> no. Everyone eats together under the same roof. What did you think I was going to say? Shame on you. I actually love Sharples. Staff. <laughs> Lastly, even if you do everything right, even if you make it through those walls and build the team, you're still going to have to pass a swim test. <laughs> is where the comparison ends, for goodness sakes, I would not dare to extend that metaphor further. But allow me to. <laughs> Once you make it out, you will not be alone. There's a network of people that have gone through the same ordeal, scraped through the same walls, and integrated themselves into society. Are there any alumni here? <laughs> yes. Okay. We'll join you momentarily. <laughs> Continuing with this whole, where is he going next? Um, I actually want to get serious for just a little bit. Um, I mentioned three recommendations that I have, not just for my classmates, but even for myself. For those of you taking notes, you can call this part of speech, like sage advice points. Just, yeah. Number one, <clears throat> never lose your thirst for awe. We've all felt it, an experience of such perceptual vastness that you have to literally reprogram your mental models of the world to assimilate to it. It was Darwin who said that attention, if sudden and close, graduates into surprise, and this into astonishment, and this into stupefied amazement. This is one of the coolest feelings of all. Let's not forget our responsibility to pay attention to everything that we do so that we may continue to live in awe. Two, try to live on the edge of comfort. It's at this boundary where you challenge your own beliefs as much as others. Beware the traps of routine. Although repetition is a key ingredient of proficiency, it's also a breeding ground for hedonic adaptation, ensuring that the things that bring us pleasure lose their power to do so more and more with every iteration. Three, never underestimate the applicability of your experience here. You have more talents than you think. You're more capable than you know. Here's a metaphor and a fun fact bundled together. If properly harnessed, the sunlight that falls on the earth in one hour could fulfill the entire planet's energy needs for a year. In this metaphor, we're the photons. Unlike photons, however, we get to choose where we go and what we eliminate. And I have no doubts that ours will be a light that has purpose. So those are the three. Great advice. <laughs> this is an important year. First to work on as an institution, and I'm sorry that I'm going to make these jokes before everyone else gets to. Founded in 1864, the college now celebrates its 150th year, also known as the Septuagintennial. <laughs> <laughs> or as we could call it, the 15 times tenial. <laughs> this comes in serendipitous coincidence with our quadrennial year of undergraduacy. Don't try to look that up. <laughs> 2014 also marks the bicentennial anniversary of the movie The Shawshank Redemption, <laughs> which was released in 1994. In, in light of this special moment, I'd like to just recite a brief quote from that movie. I find I'm so excited 
I can barely sit still or hold a thought in my head. I think it's the excitement only a free man or woman can feel. A free man or woman at the start of a long journey whose conclusion is uncertain. The important part there is that the conclusion doesn't have to be certain. So let's go forth and continue our journeys and save our conclusions for later. Let's strive to keep our minds open, our hearts ready, and our arts liberal. <laughs> As you come up and walk across this stage, keep in mind that we all bear the weight of every step that you take. As your lips curl into a proud smile, ours form symmetrically. There is no privilege greater than sharing today with each and every one of you. To you, I owe everything. Thank you, and congratulations, Swarthmore Class of 2014. <laughs>